speculate on what Prabhupada has written profoundly in these books. Yashoda, please. Uh, I, that's a very important point. I, I'm, let me give a little bit of a, an encounter I had with Srila Prabhupada. This was on the 22nd of June, 1977 in Vrindavan. This is the day of the famous rascal editor's conversation in Prabhupada's garden uh, behind the Krishna Bharam temple in Prabhupada's house. Rascal, where, where could you, what was Shrimad, that? The r Rascal Editor's? It's called Rascal Editor's Conversation. That's the title of the conversation in the Prabhupada conversation books. Okay. What happens, we were reading Srimad Bhagavatam, but there were two different editions of the Bhagavatam, and it was brought to Prabhupada's attention that the books had been edited. Now, this is a fairly controversial issue because a lot of people feel that Prabhupada allowed certain devotees and recommended certain devotees to edit his books and correct whatever mistakes or alleged mistakes were there. So basically what happened is that Prabhupada, within that conversation, it came to his attention that after the publication of the first edition, his books were being subsequently being re-edited. Prabhupada did not like that. And in that conversation, Prabhupada said, the next printing again should be the original way. Hmm. And some people have difficulty with that. I don't have any difficulty understanding that Prabhupada wanted the books returned to the first printed edition. Next, part of that conversation, Prabhupada found out that the Ishopanishad also had been edited. And Prabhupada says they cannot change anything. My understanding is they referred to the editors, the publishers, the GBC, whoever was involved in the publication in, of Prabhupada's books. He did not want his books to be changed. Now, let me get to the story here. After all of that, everybody dispersed, went to their rooms, and I ended up somewhere or other in Prabhupada's room in Vrindavan. Mm. Now, those of you who have been in India, you know it gets pretty warm. Like Venkat Prabhu is in India, he was telling me the other day, even in Bangalore, it gets, at this time of the year, sometimes 85 degrees, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it gets a little warm. So they have fans, ceiling fans. So Prabhupada had these crystal balls on his desk so the papers don't fly off. He took his crystal ball and slammed it on the desk, and it made a very strong noise, and I was startled. And Prabhupada pointed his finger at me and started to raise his voice as, you there, you, you tell them, you tell the GBC, if they change one word from what I've written, it will spoil everything I've done. Now get out and tell them. And I was so stunned, I could not, I couldn't even move. Prabhupada said, you get out, you get out and go write a letter. So I left, told the secretary to the secretary, the late secretary, I ended up writing a letter to Saad Farouk, never got a reply. I understand that they they got my letter and they wrote some reply somewhere. But the point is, Prabhupada did not want his books to be amended, to be changed. It, it is not only disrespectful, it is offensive to think that one can correct the spiritual master under the plea of an editorial embellishment. And we see, just like Venkat Prabhu showed on the screen, what they're doing. They're trying to change the philosophy. Look at your Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 34. He has seen the truth, has been changed, so they have seen the truth. Oh, excuse me, who is they? Who authorized that change? Same thing with Chaitanya Charitamrita, the beginning of Adi Lila, chapter 1. Prophet clearly says, that Jagannath Das Babaji initiated Bhaktivinoda Thakur. They didn't like that because they claim it did not conform to their understanding of initiation in ISKCON. Sorry to inform you, your understanding is defective. And you have no business changing the words of the pure devotee. Prabhupada's words are directly dictated by Krishna. It is not just some literary ABC translation. This is the words of a pure realized devotee. Very important. Prabhupada says in a letter on June 6, 1969, mm -hmm. great liberated souls come to this world only to serve the Supreme Lord's mission. 
regarding the first question in your letter but how do we know of the spiritual abode since once going there no one returns you should know that the great liberated souls and incarnations who appear from time to time in this material world are not actually coming back because they are never subject to material contamination or the laws of material nature for the purpose of delivering the fallen living entities they come here temporarily and then go back when their business is finished and this is all under the direct order of the lord so the appearance of the lord or the great liberated souls in the material world is different from the appearance of the contaminated living entity who is forced to take birth in the material world due to his desire to lord it over the world so in other words this is a very important point someone like Srila Prabhupada and eternally liberated souls is in that category is not somebody who became a pure devotee somebody mm -hmm. who became a liberated soul he was always liberated liberated right from his birth and one should never think that he that you, that you should have to correct or to to rectify the so-called alleged mistakes of the pure devotee there's another conversation where mm -hmm. prophets if you think that your spiritual master is mistaken you are mistaken Hare Krishna yes uh thank you that was an amazing uh, explanation uh, directly from uh your experience with Srila Prabhupada but somehow or other and everyone should be aware of this people have a tendency if they're ill motivated to uh misrepresent uh the words of the spiritual master for their own particular purpose this is called sahajya 